This dress is kind of like a fell, but it's a fell for a good but bad reason, but it's also one that I could fix and not just toss in the trash, all right? So I'm gonna give you all the details about that. So if you wanna hear all about the details, keep on watching. I remember I don't anywhere in town Think I'm at the ways to get my bread up Trying to see the train we was out I got no resentment of a doubt Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs and in this video, I'm gonna be giving you a sew along as well as first starting off with a pattern review and tell you guys why I do not have it on right now. I know normally when I'm doing a pattern review, I show you guys photos, which you will not see in this video. I'm giving you that caveat right now because I'm gonna tell you why you will not see it in this video. So if you're looking for the photos, you will not see it in this video. You will see it at a later time because I will be uh, changing this up to show you what I did wrong for this. But I did want do a sew along, I'm giving you that, but I'll tell you some more details along the way, all right? But if you are new to the channel, welcome. Hello, ciao, guten tag, aloha, hola, konnichiwa, waguan, sambanani, salon, bonjour. If you are returning, you guys know what to do by now. Go get you something to drink, a quick snack, come on back so we can get into a very quick pattern review and then off to the sew along. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into the pattern review. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the pattern description. So the pattern is Simplicity 8330. And for the pattern description, it is an open back mermaid style gown um, with length variations. It is a sleeveless, um, it is more like a sleeveless halter dress, can be made in several lengths. You can make it short, you can make it long, you can make it like a leg slit as well. One thing that I will mention is that the mermaid, or you could actually do like a mermaid tail tule as well. That would be cute as well. Just make sure that you use tule in order to do that. This dress also features a invisible back zipper at the back, and then it has a button closure and loops at the neck band as well. So that is the pattern description for this pattern. Once again, it's Simplicity 83. Three zero, you are able to still get this on the Simplicity website. It is from spring 2017. I'm not sure if it's in Joanne's, but it's still available on Simplicity website. All right, let's move over into the notions. But before we get into notions, let's talk about the skill level first. So the skill level based off of the Simplicity website is rated as average. Do I feel this pattern is average? Yes, I do. Um, and it did not trip me up, but I'm going to talk about that here in a minute, all right? Let's talk about notions. So for the notions, you will need two half inch buttons for the neck bend. And then if you do view C, you will need a 22 inch zipper. However, I did the bodice of view A and the skirt of view B, C, um, and I only needed a 12 inch zipper. However, I only had a 22 inch zipper. So that's what I used, all right? I used what was in my stash, because you know, guys know I've been using everything in my stash first before going out to Joanne's to buy something else, all right? So let's go ahead and talk about the fabric used. So do I need to say any more? I use 100% Ankara fabric. This fabric is from House of Mami Wata. If you looked at one of my videos that shows, you know, the fabrics, I went through each color and showed the fabrics that I have. You guys know that I said I was gonna use this fabric for um, this pattern, Simplicity 8330, and that's what I did. And I lined it with some Casa lining. I'll put it in the description box below. To that, it's from Joann's jo as the lining. So it's like a silky fabric for the lining as well. All right, so let's go ahead and move over into pattern pieces. So for this pattern, I believe you will need a total of eight pattern pieces. Let me check to make sure because you guys know I don't wanna tell you differently, but you will need pattern piece one through six and then nine and 10. So you'll need your bodice front, your bodice side front, your bodice back, your bodice side back, your neck bend, your a loop, and then you need your skirt front and back. So a total of eight pattern pieces in order to do this dress. I feel this dress comes together very quickly. 
However, because you have to do the lining pieces as well, it's not as quick as you may think. The bodice comes together so well, attaching it to the skirt, but when you it comes time to put that neck uh, band on, that's where it becomes kind of like, it didn't take as long as you thought, but it did take as long as you thought, all right? <laughs> So that is the pattern pieces used for this pattern. Let's go ahead and talk about the pattern sizing. So for this pattern, the pattern sizings run in two sizes. It goes from four to 12 and then 12 to 20. The size that I cut is a size 16 for both the bodice as well as the skirt. However, I had to size up at the waist which I graded. Um, so I want to tell you guys this: if you have two sides up at the waist, so let me tell you what I did. I cut the size 16, which gave me a 40 and a half. Now here's the thing, because this pattern, I cannot wear a bra. Even if you do the clothes back, you cannot wear a bra. Well, you can wear a bra, but your bra straps are going to show. So I did not wear a bra. So I wanted to fit it onto my body as much as possible. Now my bust measurement is a 40 and a half. So I wanted my garment to be at least 40 and a half, but my boobs is not looking like a pancake. Okay, so I did a 40 and a half and it fits like a glove. However, because the waist is too small for a size 16, I did size it up as well. So what I did is towards the bottom, I had to grade out to where it will fit at the waist and then grade out again to the hips. So that's what I did for my pattern. So one thing I wanna mention is if you have to size up your waist, you're going to have to size up your bodice back pattern pieces, okay? So it needs to fit all the way around. So whatever you size up that waist at, you need to size up the bottom of your uh, bodice at as well. That is a tip. If you do not, it is not going to fit onto the skirt when you attach them. I am telling you that now because I didn't have that problem, but I'm pretty sure a lot of you may have have had that problem because the waistline is on the skirt. So you don't think that you have to size that up at the bottom of the bodice, but you do. Okay. Even though the waist is on the waist measurement is on the skirt pattern pieces. All right. Moving over to the next thing, modifications. So did I make any modifications to this pattern? No, I did not make any modifications. I figured that this mermaid style gown, um, fits the bill. Amazing. This was supposed to be made as part of my uh, Paris collection, which you guys love it. And thank you guys so much for loving that collection as well. But I didn't have enough time to finish it, so I'm doing it now. And I knew I was gonna do it as a sew along. So that's, it's here in its glory, all right? <laughs> Let's talk about, did it look like the photos or the drawing on the pattern envelope? The front, yes. But the back, H-E double L hockey stick, no. Let me show you. So I'm gonna turn it around and I am going to say that this is where I need to do the fixing at. Here's the thing. So I'm gonna tell you that I don't know if it's the cutting layout that's wrong or the way you put it together is wrong, but one of them is wrong. And the reason why is because I cut the pattern pieces out as it instructed you to do on the cutting layout. When it comes time to attach it, right, it gives me a triangle right here instead of an oval, which caused peaking going on right here. I just do not like that whatsoever. So we're gonna go in and fix it as well. So I'm gonna take it off the dress form right quick so you could pretty much see this in full mask, all right? All right, so I have the dress off the dress form, a little Dominica she, over there, she's chilling right now, all right? And on the, if you look at it from the front, it looks amazing. But when you look at it from the back, I'm gonna hold it up so you can see that. It has a lot of poking going on right here, and that's because the back is a triangle and it's not supposed to look like a triangle it's supposed to look like an oval so that's why it does not look right but what i'm going to do is because it looks look how good it looks on the inside 
I just cannot get with throwing this dress away. So what Rochelle's gonna do is take her time, unpick it. And the only thing I have to pretty much do is tr uh, this part right here, which is your um, back facing piece, pattern piece number four. I just need to flip both of those around. Keep the back the same. It's just that piece right there. It's, the thing about it is I feel bad simply because I have to take the neck band off. I, it's a lot I have to take off, but you know, like when I have time, I will do that. I will probably do it around Christmas time. Um, and I know you're like, Rochelle, that's a lot of work. Why you're going to do that? Because listen, this is my Ankara fabric and I spent a lot of time on it. So we go, go ahead and make those changes, put it all back together and photograph in it because y'all, I really wanted to photograph in this dress because mm, it looks so amazing and I got to do, I got to do that. Okay. So I'm going to put it back on the dress form and continue with this pattern review. So give me a sec. All right. So now that I have her back on the dress form, let's talk about, are the instructions easy to follow? Yes. The instructions are easy to follow. I didn't have no problems following it, but outside of if the, um, pattern layout is correct or if it's just, you know, a sewing error. I think it's a sewing error to be honest with you, but I did the sew along. I just want to make you aware that when you attach your facing piece, make sure your back look like an oval and not like a triangle and then going down like mine ended up looking like you probably would not realize it in the sew along, but please take your time and make sure it's flipped the opposite direction. All right. Let's talk about likes and dislikes. What I like about this dress is I like that, you know, back opening. I also like the neck top, the neck band. One thing I will mention about the neck band is it is too small for me at the neck area, which is why I have to cut a new neck band. Or I think what I'm going to do is 86 the neck band and just make it like a neck tie and have it like tied in a bow in the back. I think that's what I'm going to do because this neck band, so it's a lot of things that I need to do because this neck band don't fit either. Um, once you try to button it, it cannot button in the back. So that was a problem right there. I guess I just got a fat freaking neck. I don't know. It, 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 yeah. So I think what I'm going to do is do it in a different color. I don't know if I'm going to, I want to save this, but we'll see if I decide to save it or just do it in a different color. I do have more of this fabric left. And if after making the sew along for the next pattern that I'm going to sneak peek for you today, um, if I have some left, then I will cut a whole new one and then redo this pattern. All right. Because I do want this pattern in my wardrobe. Yes, ma'am. All right, let's go ahead and move over to the next thing is first time experiences. Do I have any first time experiences? Um, no, no, unless you want to call this a backless dress, but I have done all the techniques that I have done before with this pattern. So I don't have any new techniques whatsoever. Would I sew this pattern again? Absolutely. I would sew this again, but I think if I sew it again, I want to make it like a romper or a jumpsuit. I think that would be amazing. I wouldn't make this a, just a top because you need a zipper and it's an open back. So yes, I would make it again. And I plan on making it again to redeem myself because even the, listen, you guys think like people like myself, who's advanced do not make mistakes. We all make mistakes and we learn from our mistakes. And when I have a fail, I like to redeem myself. So you guys will probably see this again by the end of the year. All right. Would I recommend this pattern to others? Yes. That's why I did a sew along. Yes. I would recommend this pattern to others. Let's talk about my pattern rating. So my pattern rating, I'm going to stamp this pattern a 4.5 out of five. And the reason why is because the, I love the whole putting it together. So I want to shout out I can't think of the name of the person who actually put this on my request line to do a sew along for it. And I actually did not say I was going to do a sew along for it, but 
I did put this as a fabric and as soon as, I'm gonna put her name up on the screen by the way, um, but as soon as I showcased this fabric and said what pattern I was gonna do, she immediately went over to the request line and was like, hey Rochelle, would you do a sew along for this that pattern? And I was like, sure, since I'm gonna be sewing it, I couldn't tell the collection it was gonna be in. Since I'm gonna be sewing it, it will be a sew along. So that's why I'm providing you with that sew along. Hey, you're welcome, honey. Um, so yeah, that's it for this sew, I'm sorry, th that's it for this pattern review. Now that I talked about the pattern review and the things that I'm going to change for it, stay tuned for photos later on in the year. I'm sorry I don't have no photos for you to give you an idea of what it would look like. I do apologize, but I will be redeeming myself with this pattern. Now that we did the pattern review, let's go ahead and get over to the sew along. Hold up, before we get to the sew along, let me tell you guys one thing. So, your girl is finally on TikTok. Yep, I'm finally on TikTok. And I wanna tell you guys, because I'm gonna need y'all's help. So, I wanna do something on TikTok for my birthday, but in order to do it, I'm gonna announce it now. I would love to go live and have y'all sew something with me or watch me sew something live for my birthday. My birthday is September 8th, but I need your help. And that help is follow me on TikTok. When I get a thousand subscribers on TikTok, I could go live and I could chat with you. I could show y'all what I'm doing live. So if you guys would like to help me out for my birthday, September the 8th, which I will probably go live on the 9th because you guys know I'm gonna celebrate my birthday. This will be my 40th birthday. So y'all can help me out and donate. Donate to the cause. I'm gonna also put all my links in the description box below so you are aware. Now that I talked about my TikTok, yes, I'm on TikTok now, let's go ahead and get it over to the sew along. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the next sew along. And the sew along that we are doing, you guys have seen it on my YouTube channel several times. This was supposed to be done about two weeks ago, but I was dealing with a headache, so I do appreciate you guys. Uh, well wishes for me as well, and telling me to get better because y'all need these sew alongs. <laughs> All right, so this is Simplicity 8330. What we're going to be doing today is the main construction. We're gonna put it together, but before we do so, Let's go ahead and get into our tools and supplies in order. Well, let's look at our instructions first before I tell you the tools and supplies that you need in order to construct this dress. So for this pattern, you will need pattern piece one through six and then nine and 10, which, is, which are your skirt front and your skirt back, all right? Now for me, I am doing the bodice of view A, but the skirt of view B. I think it's B, yeah, view B. So the bodice of view A is what I am doing, but the skirt of view, I guess you could say C because I'm not doing like, um, I'm lining it, but I am not doing kind of like a mesh or anything or um, see-through fabric and lining the fabric before lining it again, all right? So I'm not doing that, all right? But this is your cutting, this is your pattern pieces. This is your cutting layout. So I would follow the cutting layout since I am doing the bodice of view A. Follow the layout just for the bodice pieces. That's basically bodice pieces number one through six. And then because I'm doing view C, I would follow the cutting layout for view C, which is on the back. Let me show you. I would follow the layout for view C for the skirt. So that would be pattern piece number nine and 10. All right. Now for the lining, I would follow the lining piece only for the skirt for view C, which is nine and 10, which means for the lining, I need to cut pattern piece number nine with the pattern piece down and the wrong side up. Okay. So that's what it shows you there. Now, I'm not gonna get into the instructions of how to construct this because we're gonna be doing it together. And I highly advise you, now I am using black and my lining is black. So I'm not setting up two machines, I'm just using one machine. But I highly advise you to sew your main fabric 
and your lining fabric at the same time like I will be doing in this tutorial, all right? Well, that's it for the um, instructions because I will be going back and forth to the instructions as well to give you an idea of um, garment sewing and construction, all right? So I'm gonna move these instructions out of the way or whatnot here in a second. We'll talk about tools and supplies, but before we talk about tools and supplies, one thing I wanna mention, I'm gonna grab my pattern piece. If you need to make any adjustments for your pattern, go ahead and do so now. Now, I get asked this all the time, so I'm gonna grab pattern piece number one, and it's cut on the fold. And I always get asked, how do I measure where my bust, my waist, my hips, and all that good stuff at? Is that, right? Well, now this is just a copy of my pattern that I have, the pattern piece, okay? So what you will do is at the bust, wherever it says bust that, you would measure across. So let me grab my measuring tape. And let's say, for instance, I'm just gonna draw a line. This line right here is my bust line. So what I do is take my measuring tape. Now this is cut on the fold. So you have a right side and a left side, all right? So you're gonna take your measuring tape, go across, and I have six. So I'm gonna write six down. Because you have two sides, a left side and a right side, you have to multiply by two, all right? And it's cut on the fold, right? So one left side, right side, six times two is 12. Now you have to take out the seam allowance. You have five eighths of an inch on the left side, five eighths of an inch on the right side. So that's 1.25. So you take 12 minus 1.25 is, 10.75, all right? So this front pattern piece measures 10.75. Now let me show you an example on the back pattern piece because I think this is where you guys get confused about how do you measure the pattern piece? And I have gotten so many questions about this here lately and I have a video about this. So this, so let's just say this is my bodice, I mean, or my bust line, but you don't have a bust line in the back, but you should be lining up your notches to figure out where your bust line, quote unquote bust line, because you don't have bust in the back, but where your back bra would help, you know, your where your bra would sit in the back of you, right? So you would do the same thing, pretty much the same thing. Take your measuring tape, measure across. This gives me six inches. So I'm gonna write six inches. Now, for your bodice back, you have one side where it's gonna be a left and a right, a zipper in the middle, and then on the right side, a left and right. So you have 5 eighths plus 5 eighths, right? That's 1.25, and then 5 eighths plus 5 eighths, which is another 1.25, because essentially, you'll have two pieces in the back because there's a zipper in the middle. So you have 5 eighths on the left side, five eighths in the middle on one piece. Then on the other piece, you have five eighths in the middle and five eighths on the right hand side, which is another 1.25. So 1.25 plus 1.25 is 2.5, okay? So that's the seam allowance you gotta take out. Now, because this is two pattern pieces, you know, you have the back left and the back right, you're going to still multiply by two, okay? And then that gives you 12, but then take out the seam allowance, right? 2.5, and then it gives you 9.5. So each piece is 9.5, okay? So you're gonna take this 9.5 plus 9.5 plus the 10.75, and that'll give you your bust measurement all the way around, all right? So that's how you measure your pattern pieces. I just wanted to tell you guys that because I'm still getting questions about that, all right? So let's go ahead and talk about tools and supplies that you need in order to construct this dress. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the tools and supplies that you need in order to sew Simplicity 
three zero. So of course you're going to need the pattern and the pattern instructions. You will need pens. I use both. Um, when I'm running out, I'll just grab the other one. Um, you will need scissors, one for paper, one for fabric, never mix the two there. You'll need rotary cutter. I use rotary cutters to cut, but if you prefer scissors to each its own, right? You'll also need a pencil or a pen, whatever your method of writing out, you know, if you need to sides up, sides down, you will need a pencil or a pen for that. You will need a ruler if you need to sides up or sides down as well for that. Um, you will also need marking tools. The marking tools is a white soluble pencil or you can use a disappearing ink marker as well. I use them both, but for mine, I just use white because I have a black fabric. And then you will need a calculator. So the calculator is basically for you to size up, size down, get the measurement that you want so it could fit your body, all right? And then the only thing that you need in terms of notions is basically two half inch buttons and a 12 inch invisible zipper. But that's pretty much all you need in order to construct this dress. So let's go ahead and get on into the sewing. Now, before we get into the sewing, I did not show you guys the pattern pieces that we will need and what are the things that you will need. So let's go ahead and get into that first before we get into the sewing. The sewing is relatively easy, but I'm gonna walk you through that. So the first pattern piece is of course, pattern piece number one. Let me move everything out the way. So you will need pattern piece number one. And pattern piece number one is your bodice front for all views. You need to cut one on the fold of fabric and one on the fold of lining as well as one on the fold of interfacing. So you should have your main fabric, your interface piece, which you will need to interface pattern piece number one, and then your lining, all right? Now, um, I'm gonna tell you this here, but you've seen it in the pattern review. I am using Ankara fabric. The Ankara fabric is from House of Mommy Wata. If you wanna get something like this, you can go to her website. It will be linked in the description box below. For the, fab for the lining fabric, this is some Casa fabric from Joann's, all right? It's also linked in the description box below. Just to give you that. So you need to cut one unfold of fabric, lining, and interfacing. The next pattern piece that you will need is pattern piece number two, which is your bodice side front. You need to cut two of fabric, two of lining, and two of interfacing. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number three, which is your bodice back. You need to cut two of fabric, two of lining, and two of interfacing. If you are doing view B and you are contrasting, you need to cut two of contrast fabric as well, all right? Next pattern piece is pattern piece number four, which is your bodice side back. You need to cut two of fabric, two of lining, and two of interfacing. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number five, which is your neck band. For all views, you need to cut one unfold of fabric and one unfold of lining. And the, and the last piece for the bodice is pattern piece number six. And this is your loop. You just need to cut one of fabric. And then you need your skirt pieces. So you need pattern piece number nine, which is your skirt front for view B and view C. And you need to cut one on the fold of fabric, one on the fold of lining. And then pattern piece number 10, which is your skirt back, you need to cut two of fabric and then two of lining. That's all. Now, me personally, I'm not cutting lining. I, I will cut, the, I'm take, let me take that back. I will cut the lining out when I get to this portion because it's pretty much the same. Now, if you have a Ankara fabric and you don't want to do lining for the skirt, that's perfectly up to you and just want to line the top, you can do that as well. Now for me, I'm only lining the bodice. I probably will not line the skirt portion because it's black and it's not see-through. But we'll see when I get to that step, all right? So that's all that you, these are all the pieces that you need in order to construct this lovely dress. So let's go ahead and get into the sewing. All right, so go ahead and grab pattern piece number one and pattern piece number two, which are your, your bodice front and your bodice side front pieces. Now, 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to pin my lining pieces together the same time that I pin my main fabric. Now you guys are gonna see main fabric. You're not gonna really see a lot of the lining fabric unless it's something that needs to be set, all right? So I'm gonna move my lining fabric out of the way and just work with my main fabric. So I'm gonna open it up. It looks like this. And then I'm just going to move my lining like I just mentioned out of the way and what you're going to do is pin your side front pattern pieces to your front pattern pieces okay right sides together so look at the way that I'm doing this this piece goes to the right side okay this piece goes to the left side all right now you will have notches make sure that it looks like this make sure you match it up very well all right now I'm gonna move this one out of the way and just turn it this way, all right? And what we're gonna do is match up the notches. So you have a, a notch right here. You're gonna match that up, match your notch, and you're going to pin. You're gonna pin at the bottom. And then you're gonna pin the length of that side seam. So make sure you pin all the way up and down the side seam. Now, if you need to make a couple of snips in order for it to give, um, you can do that, that's up to you, um, but you want to make sure that it lays flat. So go ahead and finish pinning your side seam now. All right, so now that I have my side front pinned to my front right sides together, Using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm gonna backstitch at the beginning and sew all the way down, backstitch at the end, and then press my seam open. I'm going to do this on both sides and also do it for my lining piece, all right? So go to the sewing machine and do that now. All right, so I have my bodice front completely done. I'm going to move this off to the side. I also did my lining as well. I'll show you that here in a minute because I already did the bodice back and the uh, bodice side back as well. So I'll show you that here in a minute after I show you how to do the bodice back. So I'm gonna move this off to the side. If you notice that I pressed my seams open, go ahead and grab pattern piece number three and four. Now I'm just gonna show you the main portion, do the lining the same way. All right, so what I'm gonna do is open it out all right, these are my back pattern piece. And once again, you're going to pin your bodice back to your, bo your bodice side back, all right? So you have a notch right here, right here. You're gonna line that up with this side. Now, I wanna show you how it should look before I pin it so you guys don't get confused, all right? So let me scoot it up so you can see Take a picture of how I am pinning this together, all right? Just like that. Now, I'm just gonna pin one, just to show you, so you have notches. Make sure you line up your notches, and then line up your top and your bottom, all right? So I'm gonna pin. I'm just gonna pin all the way up to where this little peak right there, is at the side. So go ahead and pin both of your side backs to your side, your, pin your bodice back to your bodice side back now. All right, so now that I have the bodice back to the bodice side back, right sides together, using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, backstitch at the beginning and backstitch at the end, and then press your seams open. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that we have the bodice side back to the bodice back, right sides together, you can see it from the inside, I went ahead and pressed it. So go ahead and grab your front pattern piece, your front bodice portion, and with right sides together, we're going to pin the bodice back to the bodice side back at the side seams. Now. This little curve area right here should be on the inside, all right? So let me show you this. This should be on the inside where your bodice back is. You're not attaching that on the side seam, just your side area, all right? So I'm gonna turn it. So let me show you how it should look because I don't want you guys to get confused. 
All right. This is what it should look like. All right. So now I'm going to turn mine and pin. So you're just going to pin up that side seam. All right. So match your notches right here and then pin all the way the length of your bodice side. Now in the instructions, I'm going to pin, but I'm going to talk. Um, in the instructions, it's wrong. I'm going to bring the instructions back here shortly, but it's wrong. It's telling you to pin your bodice, uh, front to your bodice back, right at the side seams. You are unable to do that. You should be pinning your bodice side back to your bodice side front at the side seam. So make sure you either make a note or just remember that you are pinning your bodice side back to your bodice side front at the side seams. Why? Because your fronts are already sewn at the side seam by pinning the front to your bodice side front was the first thing that you did. So you cannot pin your front to your back at the side seam, if that makes sense. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and pin, um, this side as well. So go ahead and finish pinning the side seam of your bodice side back to your bodice side front now. All right, so now that I have the bodice side front to a uh, pin to the bodice side back using five eighths of an inch seam allowance back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to sew from the bottom up using five eighths of an inch on both sides. All right. So go ahead and do that now and then brush, press your seams open. All right. So now that we have our side back attached to our side front right sides together. This is what the main fabric look like on the outside, the right side. And then this is what it looks like on the inside. All right. So just go ahead and move your bodice out of the way. It's time to start constructing our skirt. Now I am doing skirt C as in Charlie cat, whatever you want to call, right? I am doing option B. All right. So this is my back pattern pieces. Now, the first thing you want to do is stay stitch across. All right. After you stay stitch across at a half of an inch seam allowance, you're going to go ahead and make your darts. Now, this is my back pattern piece. I already did it. I already did the back pattern piece, make the dart. All right. And then you're going to press your darts towards where your zipper is, which is this straight edge right here. All right. So when you press the darts down, make sure you are pressing it to where your dart is pressed towards your back. Let me see if you can see that right here. All right. So make sure you do that. All right. Now this is my back pattern piece. I would definitely need to put the darts in my front. So go ahead and make your darts for both your front and your back pattern piece now. All right. So now that I have the darts made, I'm going to bring this. Now this is my front pattern piece. This is my dart right here. And I press the dart towards the center. So this dart right here is pressed to this center and this dart is pressed to this center. Do not press your darts towards the side seam on your front. All right. Now I'm going to turn it to the right side. This is the right side facing up and I'm going to grab my skirt back. All right. And right sides together. So just know that this straight edge goes in the center for your zipper. So I'm going to pin this one over here and then I'm going to take the other one and pin on this side. All right. Right sides together. Now I'm just going to turn it and all you're going to do is match your notches. So you have a notch right here. You want to match and pin all the way down on both sides. After you do that, what you're going to do, I'm just going to pin and talk what you're going to do after you um, pin the side seams, you're going to take it to the sewing machine. Now here's, here's my tip. You're going to take it to the sewing machine using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. You're going to back stitch at the beginning and at the end, and then press your seams open. If you are doing a lining, 
However, I am not doing a lining for mine because I don't need a lining for my bottom. I'm just going to serge the inside of my dress. Now, I know you're wondering, now here's the thing. I thought about not doing a lining for my skirt because I don't feel like actually lining it. But one thing I just noticed because I'm gonna cut some lining here shortly after I do this. I'm gonna cut some lining and the reason why is because I want it to look as good as on as it does on the outside. I want the inside to look as good as the outside. So in order to have your skirt look good on both the inside and the outside, I think I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet and cut the lining pieces for the skirt as well to have a fully lined um, dress like this dress is intended to be, right? So instead of half stepping, your girl is going to go ahead and put in the lining as well. So when I come back after surging, not surging, I'm sorry, sewing the side seams, you will also see that the lining will be done. Now, if you are not doing a lining and you're just going to search the side seams because you don't need that and you just wanna line the bodice, do what you do, honey. It is not going to bother me whatsoever. You, We sew because we wanna make it the way that we want to, all right? Now that I have both sides pins using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch, back stitch at the beginning and at the end, and if you are doing lining, you want to press your seams open. If you are going to serge it, sew both seams, serge both seams together, you could serge them separately if you choose. But go ahead and sew your side seams now. So now that I have the bodice pinned to the skirt using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, if you're just gonna go ahead and uh, sew it without making a basting stitch, using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end and sew your bodice onto your skirt. Once you do that, press your seams open, all right? Now, if you are not doing a lining, which this dress you need to do at least the uh, lining on the bodice, um, you could serge it together. It's up to you what you wanna do, but I'm just going to um, sew all the way across and then press my seams open. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I went ahead and attached the bodice to the skirt, I went ahead and pressed it open all the way across. So the next thing you're gonna do is start installing your zipper. So you guys have seen me do my, and zip, my zippers several times, right? And I install my zippers the same way. So what I'm gonna do is make sure I match up the um, seam allowance where pressing my bodice, I'm, I'm sorry. So the seam allowance between your skirt and your bodice, make sure you press that seam allowance up towards the bodice, not open, press it up towards the bodice. If you have not done so already, I went ahead and searched the 
side seams of my skirt because it's, you know, to finish off the raw edge. Now what I'm going to do is definitely line up the seam lines on my skirt and I'm going to pin there, all right? I'm going to pin at the top, make sure it matches all the way down, okay? Now, I pinned my seam allowance at the skirt, I pinned the top, and then you have a notch and it's right here. Make sure you pin at that notch. That's where your zipper is going to stop, all right? And then if you need some more pins, definitely pin. So I'm gonna put a double pin here to show where it's going to, where my zipper is going to stop. And then I'm going to pin all the way down my um, skirt. So go ahead and pin your skirt now. All right, so now that I have it pinned using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch, we're gonna back stitch at the be back stitch at the hem. I'm gonna start at the hem and go up to the top. So I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning, so all the way to the double notches, and then I'm gonna break my thread, switch to a basting stitch, and go from that notch all the way up, just basting it. Once I do that, I'm gonna press it open, and then after I press it open is where I'm going to install my zipper. Now, if you have not seen me um, do a zipper, you can definitely go back to a couple of videos um, where I install zippers. I show you how to install zippers as well. Um, so I'm not gonna be showing you how to install a zipper in this video because I already have videos that show you in detail how to install an invisible zipper. So it's the same process, all right? Now, if you look in the description box below, I show two videos where, you know, you could learn how to install an invisible zipper, all right? So go ahead, sew your side seam, and then go ahead and install your zipper, all right? So go ahead and do that now. All right, so I have my zipper done. I know my, zip, my zipper is very long, so I'm gonna show you that it's a 22 inch zipper. It's the only size that I had in my stash. I only really needed a 12 inch, but hey, we're gonna just go ahead and cut this off when I am completely done with my lining, all right? So this is my zipper. It zips up with no issues. Let me show you, no issues, right? Okay. Now, I also went ahead and hemmed my skirt simply because I am not installing a lining. Now, if you are doing a lining, follow the instructions. Basically, you're going to sew the lining the same way before you attach, after you attach the bodice, I'm sorry, before you attach the bodice, you're going to attach the lining to your skirt attach the bodice um, and sew it together. It's in the instructions, so if you are doing the lining, it's in the instructions, you're gonna have to follow that, all right? I'm just doing it without because I don't need all of the lining, okay? Now I'm going to turn it, um, actually I have it right side out for a reason, and what I'm gonna do is start um, putting on the lining. Now open up your zipper, make sure your zipper is open, all right? And what I'm gonna do is turn it over. Now, first, bef now after I turn it over, I'm gonna move this out the way for just a second, my dress out of the way. I'm gonna grab my lining. Now, you're going to attach your lining the exact same way as your um, main fabric, all right? Now, let me tell you something. I said this um, before. Attach your lining while you're doing your main fabric. So when you get to the lining fabric, you don't have to go back and remember what you have done, all right? So I did say that, but if you didn't, rewind it back and then do the same thing that you have already done, all right? Now, all, all this is is front to side, front, side, front to side, back, and then side, back to back, all right? Once you do that, you're going to press up 5 eighths of an inch along the bottom edge of your lining, all right? So that's what I did here. I went ahead and created a 5 eighths of an inch basting stitch and then um, pressed it up. Now go ahead and grab your main fabric, your dress, right? And what we're going to do is we are going to attach the lining 
to our dress, right sides together, all right? Now, one thing I wanna mention is you're just going to, uh, you're gonna leave the neck edge open and just attach along the shoulder seams, the back, and that's it, all right? You're not going to attach the neck edge yet. So what I'm gonna do is flip it over to the back to show you this. And now your back seam allowance will extend 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, okay? Now, because I'm doing this like this, make sure you have, you are attaching this right. So everything should match up entirely fine, all right? So I'm going, going to pin my back. Like I said, it will extend 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and it is perfectly fine if it does, okay? So don't harp on, mine is not extending 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. It should. If it didn't, something's wrong and you have to go back to the video and figure out what was wrong and why it did not extend 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. But make sure you are pinning your seams correctly, matching up your seams, pinning your seams, and go all the way around your back and your armhole and pinning all the way around. So go ahead and pin your um, lining to your main fabric now. All right, so now that I have my lining pinned to my main fabric, make sure it is crucial. So make sure that your lining match up all the way around. One thing I'm gonna mention, I'm gonna bring the instructions back, right? So because my bodice is view A, I believe, let me make sure that I'm telling you which one I'm doing. So yes, the bodice of view A or B, and my skirt is view C, but the length of view B, if that makes sense, okay? That's what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go to the back portion where we attach the lining, right? I am on 33, so basically, I'm actually on 31 right now where I just finished pinning and I'm get, getting ready to sew it, all right? But I wanna look at 33 real quick because it's all together in this, um, this portion that you're going to do. On step number 33, it tells you to press under three fourths of an inch on back edge of lining and then you're going to base the neck edge of lining and bodice together, slip stitch the press edge of the lining to the zipper tape and overseam. All right, so we're not gonna do that. I'm gonna tell you what I did. I literally made sure that my zipper is turned all the way out and placed my lining all the way there because I want a clean finish on the inside and on the outside because I want it clean on the inside, clean on the outside. If you know the song, you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm referencing. So what I'm gonna do is using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm gonna sew the First, I'm gonna actually sew the armhole area, the back. I'm gonna sew all the way up. Do not sew the neck area. Leave the neck area up here alone. Leave this area alone. Just sew the side seams and the armhole area into the back, all right? Using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, you're gonna back stitch at the beginning and at the end. And then once you do that, make sure you attach your zipper area just sewing slowly at 3 eighths of an inch as well. All right, so go ahead and do that. Now, after you do that, you want to understitch. You're gonna understitch on your lining. I have showed you guys how to understitch before. Understitch is done at a fourth of an inch seam allowance. You understitch on the lining. So make sure that your seam allowance is pressed towards your lining or push towards your lining and then sew on your lining as far as you could go all the way around after you sew it together, all right? And make sure you're using a regular length stitch. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so I went ahead and did the front. I got the lining sewn on. Now, this is a personal preference. You, I did some top stitching along the armhole, the back, I just top stitch everything except for the neck edge right here. So uh, also finish off your lining on the inside. I went ahead and finished so it's looking good on the inside and the outside. So the only thing left for you to do is your loop and your neckband. So go ahead and move that off to the side. 
grab your neck band and your loop. But first let's do the loop. So how you're gonna do the loop is you're gonna fold it right sides together, stitch about a fourth of an inch, and then pull it right side out, right? So after you do that, you're gonna go ahead and fold it in half and take your scissors and cut it in half, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and cut that in half. After you cut it in half, go ahead and grab pattern piece number five, which is your neck band, all right? And then what you wanna do is create a loop like this, and you're going to place it right where your dots are. So you're gonna place both of your loops right there and then just kind of baste it. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so I went ahead and put the loops on. I'm gonna take this off for a second. The loops looks like this. Let me bring them closer. That's what the loops look like, just baste it on. And then what I did was create a 3 8 of an inch basting stitch down at the bottom and then pressed it up. After I pressed the lining up on the neck band, I just pinned it right sides together just like so. And then what you're going to do is you're going to stitch both side seams and across, all right? So you're going to be stitching, I believe in the instruction it's 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, but let me get the pattern piece. Nope, it's a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, you're gonna back stitch at the beginning, sew across both sides and sew across the top. Once you sew that, you're going to trim down your seam allowance and then understitch. So what that means is basically you're gonna make sure that your seam allowance is pressed towards your lining and then understitch on your lining and it basically makes sure that that lining stays on the inside of your neck band. All right, so go ahead and do that now. All right, so be, one thing that I wanna mention because I know I just said 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, but it's 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I just looked at the pattern piece before going to the sewing machine. So sew across both sides and the top using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so I went ahead and sewed the side seams. I sewn across using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. One thing I'm gonna tell you to do is if you have your loops on the left side, go ahead and unpick those and move it to the right side. And the reason why I'm telling you that is because if you uh, was paying attention, you would have known I had it on the left side when I pinned it, but I hurried up and switched it simply because they need to go on the right hand side because it is the left side when wearing it and you will put your buttons on the right hand side instead of the left hand side, all right? So make sure that when you do your neck band, it looks like this, all right? So go ahead and grab your dress. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna be uh, pinning this bottom edge to your dress, all right? Right sides together. So you have a dot. Let's make sure I'm pinning it all correctly. So I'm going to pin at the end and the dot right here goes to that center. So I'm gonna pin at the end. I'm just gonna show you how all of this goes together. I'm gonna put in this dot to this edge right here. And then I'm gonna do that same thing on the other side. So just showing you on the other side, we're going to pin the ends, making sure that you keep your lining free. You don't wanna sew that lining. We have a dot right here. We're gonna make sure that we pin that dot to the edge right here, pin there. And now we're going to pin across right here. Now you could adjust however you see fit. You're supposed to have dots right here, but my pattern piece did not have dots on it. So I'm just gonna kind of like play this part by ear. Actually, I do see a dot, I am so sorry, it's right here. So this dot right here match up with this side seam. All right, it was supposed to have some dots. I didn't see it at first, but I see it now on this side. So I do apologize for saying that. And then the other side right here, there's a dot right here and that dot meets up with that edge, all right? So I'm gonna pin there, and then just put a few pins around the uh, neck edge. So go ahead and pin your neck edge to the bottom portion, pin your neck band to your neck edge now. All right, so now that I have it all pinned together, 
Using 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, you're gonna back stitch at the beginning, so across, stop at this dot right here. You're gonna start at this dot, so all the way across to the other dot, break your thread, and then sew from this dot all the way across, all right? So go ahead and do that. Once you're done with that, you're gonna trim it down if you need to, and then press your uh, seam allowance up towards your lining and fold it over. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the um, front and the back attached to the neck band, now I did this, all you're going to do is press the seams up towards the neck band, and then you're going to make sure that that bottom edge that you pressed up 3 8 of an inch is basically a little over the neck edge, okay? And then what I did was I went ahead and I have not stitched it yet, but pin to where you could stitch. Now I like to stitch on the right side, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to base all the way across and then I'm gonna flip it over so as close to the edge as possible so I know that it's catching in and then remove the basting stitch, all right? So that's what I'm gonna do for mine. After I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and add my buttons on the right side when wearing it. Um, I'm gonna add probably three eighths of an inch button because these are supposed to be for a half an inch. I don't think a half an inch is going to work for this. So I'm gonna add a three eighths of an inch button. And once I do that, this is completely done, hun, okay? So yes, I actually, I love this dress. And yeah, that's it for the video. All right, so this is that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed. And if you make this pattern, do not forget to tag me on Instagram at rochelle.handmade.design. I'll catch you in the next video. All right, so there you have it. That is the complete pattern review and the sew along. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you make this dress, or follow my so any of my sew along, do not forget to hit that like button, subscribe button, also, Smash that notification bell so you are notified every time your girl uploads a new video. And if you make this dress, you guys know what to do. Go ahead and tag me on Instagram at rochelle.handmade.designs. So I'll catch you in the next video. And as always, keep sewing.